Uh, today we're going to talk about Exodus uh, and other historical movies. And we have Bethany, Aaron, Reese, and Andy with us. And uh, Mark has lost his voice, so I'm doing the MCing today because I'm cool. Uh, <laughs> the rest of you, uh, yeah, you have all heard about the movie, I hope. Uh, any initial thoughts on it? The basic premise of what's brought this conversation on was the actual um, bands in Egypt and Morocco um, uh, concerning this film. And uh, uh, from what I can see, it's been cited that um, they're basically banned it for historical inaccuracy. And, um, Which is funny, since it's a biblical story. There are so many other faults with the movie, uh, but I think that the biblical aspect is kind of yeah, not that important. I mean, <laughs> if, but if we're looking at the story, I mean, we the pyramids are believed to be, have been built about a thousand years before the story of Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So, but I mean, the Bible isn't a very viable source for historic records. Since it's it is not. a source for great stories, and I think that I, I think whenever we have these discussions about films that deal with historical subjects and whether they're accurate or, or not, and leaving aside all the religious and modern political arguments, I think we have to start from the, the baseline that really we're not dealing with a, you know, a, a PhD thesis, we're actually dealing with the work of fiction that sometimes might even aspire to be a work of art, but that's the, that's the most. We're not actually dealing with something that sets out to tell a historical story. We're, telling to, we're dealing with things that set out to tell a story against an interesting background. Yeah, sure. And I mean, there are other issues with the movie I see, like uh, that uh, almost the entire cast uh, that plays Middle Eastern or African characters are mainly white. Uh, and I mean, if you if you read the blogs and the the interviews with the production team, you get the famously amazing quote: "I can't mount a film on this budget and say that my lead actor is Mohammed and so and so from such and such from the director." Uh, then he he says he's just not going to get financed. And I mean, I see that as a much bigger issue <laughs> than. Uh, some historical defects. Uh, I mean, we're talking about like systematic racism if a movie can't get funding just because the actors aren't white. <laughs> I think it's not just the aunt because they're uh, not white, but you also got to think this is Hollywood and here in the United States it's all about money, money, money. And if you put someone in a lead role that no one knows about, the chances of the marketing and everything of them actually being a successful film is mm -hmm. low. So it, but I mean, we don't. We have the same problem when it comes to the supporting actors and just extras. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Yes, that's right. And that's not the only movie. You got other movies. Uh, that was it Prince of Persia, uh, mm -hmm. Noah, yeah. all those in the same way. But I think. I mean, you can look at the Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're doing it intentionally because it'd be racist, or if they're looking at it more from a capitalistic perspective. I, 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 I think you, 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 you're right. I, mean, I, I, I think um, it's a you, you, you're dealing with an, an international mass marketed artifact, and and so what they're doing is homogenising the content to make it as acceptable to as many people as possible. And it, I, you know, it, it, it's, I'm not saying that they're in that there are intentionally racist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just right. saying that the system might be. Yeah. Well, my thought would have been they could have just used Odette Fair for starters. I mean, he's a uh, <laughs> Middle Eastern actor for starters. There's one off the top of my head. And I'm sure there's plenty of others um, walking around Hollywood that they could have used. Um, admittedly, they might not have been main characters, but like you're saying, Aaron, um, they don't need to whitewash the... Um, the uh, rest of the cast. And I think, um, I don't know whether I actually agree with you, Andy, on the premise of um, artistic license as, a, as it is. You know, they're basing this on a, uh, assumably, a myth. Um, it, it's, an, it's, it's being made for an entertainment factor. That is true. However, it's the 
context that when you start pulling uh, bits and pieces of historical, uh, what, when this 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 idea of um, the the being able to film a movie in an actual historical um, uh, part of time, something that's actually portrayed as being happened as has happened, such ancient Egypt, for example, what you're getting is not so much inaccuracies to do with the Bible, but inaccuracies to do with the Egyptian culture, the ancient Egyptian culture. And that is where um, a lot of people have, uh, um, I suppose, started this outcry predominantly because of um, things like um, Kara Cooney, um, the famous Egyptologist, pointed out that the crown that uh, Ramses II wears is in fact made for a princess. Um, and that's such a lazy mistake. <laughs> That is, that is. That, look, come on, let's lighten up here. Please, what, what, you, what we're dealing with is not a something, to, to coin a phrase that's you know, um, written in tablets of stone for all time. Um, we're dealing with qu querying current interpretations of Egyptology or, uh, you know, in the yeah, yeah, gladiator or whatever. Um, the, the, but if you know, I may, if yeah, I, may I mean, they have employed an Egyptologist to the movie to help them with the research. That indicates that they wanted some kind of accuracy. No, it, it indicates that they wanted to appear to have some kind of accuracy. The, te the technical advisor is roughly on the same level of importance in the film studio as the studio janitor when it comes to cre creative decisions. Uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, uh, but if you want to be appear accurate, then you shouldn't at least make such a lazy mistake as using a, a queen's crown or helmet for the king. And I mean, they have a bizarre focus on Ramses II too, like focusing on post-Augustine Rome, when they had so many others they could have used them. I mean, you basically need to open up a book. That's right, but, but, but again, don't, don't, don't forget, a film isn't a visual interpretation of a book. A film is an entity unto itself, and the, and, and the director and the director's production designer and the director's director of photography are, 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 and the actors and the writer, they're all coming together to create a work of art, a work of fiction. And we, you know, we, it's, it, let me let me take another example. And before we started talking, we were we, we, we were chatting and we were, we were uh, talking about Tolkien. And look at the problems that Peter Jackson ran into with a lot of Tolkien fans over the liberties as they saw it that he took with a completely fictionalised world, um, albeit one that's based on a ripoff of Northern European mythology. Oh, sorry, I didn't say that. Um, but um, you know, you know what I mean. It, Whenever it, it, these things are fab, uh, fabulous and fun, fun to talk about, and uh, you know, the issues of sexism and racism in, 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 in movies and in the media are, are, are important ones. I agree absolutely with you. Liv. Um, I, I, I just think that we shouldn't start condemning something that is a sen an entertainment and a piece of fiction on the grounds that, that it's that not historically accurate. Ludicrous, <laughs> according to me. Uh, <laughs> but we still have to see. I mean. If we can't discuss it, then we have the problem of when it comes to real historical, that, that's where I draw a line between yeah. Tolkien and when they try to do like historical movies, <laughs> which they kind of are claiming this is, even though it's based on the Bible. Uh, I mean, they have posted on their web page like pictures of the helm and trying to describe what it is. They're trying to make it appear as a quite serious historical movie. So, okay, besides that um, kind of justification, the other issue is, is the comparison you just drew, Andy, is that um, you're talking about something which is a, which is a complete work of fiction, um, The Lord of the Rings, by comparison to a movie which bases on a an actual ancient culture, which today still has roots in a, a modern society that still exists. and. To make inaccurate portrayals of such a thing is, um, well, it, it's, it's just morally um, ambiguous. It, it's, it's this idea that artistic license trumps historical accuracy, and I don't believe that at all. I, I mean, 
I mean, what do, what, what do you think, Aaron and Bethany? Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Well, there's like some things that you can forgive them for, like the pharaoh in the film is uh, Ramses. And it's, I was reading an article before and it says that the Bible does not name the pharaoh of Exodus. So we don't really have anything to go on rather than if people try to roughly match it up to a time period. Um, and they said that there's like half a dozen different pharaohs that they thought it could be and it ended up being Ramses and it's also been used in the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston mm-hmm. and in the Prince of Egypt. So Ramses has become like the go-to pharaoh for, for films based around this time. So things like that you can probably forgive them for. We don't have any hard evidence, but uh, I don't know, for me it's like the, the little things that are really easy to, to get right. Like you were saying before about the, the headdress that Cara Cooney had posted about. And it's just, I'm sure you guys probably understand when you're watching a film and you have some some sort of knowledge about it and then it just niggles away in the back of your head because you're like, that's wrong. And it's so easy for someone to go out and research it within a day and say, this is what it was and we need to make sure that it's right. It's um, like in, in other films when you have Roman emperors and they have, um, like in Gladiator, Mm. and you have emperors doing thumbs up or thumbs down for whether or not someone should live and whenever they go thumbs down uh, that means in the films that the gladiator should die and it's one inaccuracy that's always really peed me off because that means no let them live don't kill them and it's little things like that that have always bugged me so I can see why a lot of people are getting really kind of angry and frustrated yeah. But Look, some of the bigger things that kind of like the thing about the pharaohs is a bit easier to forgive. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think one of the worst ones, and I mean, this does not just go straight to Exodus. So we're talking about um, other movies here as well now. This um, sandals and swords genre, um, where they generally portray, such as Troy um, films. Uh, which are in the um, what we know as the Bronze Age. So obviously, bronze swords, bronze technology um, was prevalent. Yeah, for some reason, we're always seeing these brilliant examples of um, Iron Age swords. Um, so iron swords, and we see this again in um, Exodus, where uh, it just seems the technology is about you know 500 years, a couple of thousand years ahead of itself. So, I mean, it, it is um, for all intents and purposes not tweaking history, but certainly um, publicising a history that isn't real, isn't true, and not that we necessarily believe that people are going to go to this film and think, okay, this is where I'm going to go and get my historical fact from, but it's a starting point, and it's it's as if it's um, this kind of movie, these kind of movies such as uh, 300, which, I mean, if 300 wasn't made, um, the majority of the world would not have known about the Battle of Thermopylae or where even Thermopylae was. Today, though, you ask every second person where the Battle of 300 happened, that some of them would be able to tell you it happened in Thermopylae. So it's a big, it is a starting point um, for people's uh, interaction with history. And I suppose what we're saying is that that interaction should be relatively historically accurate, um, as, as accurate as uh, they could be. Rather and I mean, than it's also, for me at least, it's uh, it's about the appreciation of the cultures they're trying to portray. I mean, for me, they don't have to enhance Egypt, Egypt culture to make it amazing. And, I mean, <laughs> You don't have to bring the Iron Age into the Bronze Age to make epic battles or to make it as cool as it was. I mean, you can have a great action movie anyway. Uh, so it's just, I don't know, I, 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 I don't buy the whole artistic license. Uh, I mean, if, and also, I mean, it seems like a waste of money to hire on an expert if you're not going to use it. 
I think that, you, that that expert work would have been paid a tiny fraction of the fee that the leading actors were going to get paid. Um, and, I mean, you, you had, I mean um, they're still paying someone. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I understand. Look, look I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to stick my neck on the block again and, and play devil's advocate here because, and uh, I can see Aaron is laughing away in the, in the bottom of the room here too. Um, but look, I, I, I think there's a couple of things in play here. I think first of all, I think the historical inaccuracies and so on become important in the sort of, in the sort of inverse, ratio, in inverse ratio to how good the movie actually is. Um, I think most of us. Uh, and take another Ridley Scott movie we talked about earlier, Gladiator, which um, basically rebooted the entire sword and sandal genre, which everyone thought was dead because it was such an actually blooming good movie. And okay, you had an Australian playing a, uh, a, 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 a quote, an Italian, um, and so on and so on and so on. Um, and there were lots of historical inaccuracies in that, not least the final demise of the Emperor Commodus. But hey, it didn't matter. Um, because it was a terrific movie, and afterwards we can have a lot of fun dissecting the things that were wrong with it. Um, but again, it's not fair to comment entirely uh, just on, 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 on the latest movie, Exodus, because I haven't actually seen it yet, but certainly the reviews that I've read suggest actually it's a best than a pretty average film. It's had some you know, spectacular elements and so on, but we can we have a lot of fun with this. I mean, you know, if, if, if we're talking about historical accuracy in the media, I, I, I'm more worried about things like ancient aliens than I am about some inaccuracies in the piece of art. Um, you know, it, it, Isn't Ancient Aliens a piece of art? Ancient <laughs> I mean, uh, sure Aliens is a piece of cynical cashing in on an audience, but anyway, that's, another, that's, that's another discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we're going to talk about Ancient Aliens, you can have me raging all day. <laughs> I, know, I know, I hope we will do another time. <laughs> so we're going to do a bit of a summary now, because we're heading into a very long video. Uh, I thought that we're going to go one one by one and, well, basically sum up our opinions and uh, what we want to say. And I'll start because I have the word. Uh, and uh, I basically, I mean, I, I, I accept that it's an art form and it's going to be uh, discrepancies and faults and stuff like that. Um, but, I, and we have to blame ourselves a bit because I mean, we don't get out there and apparently Hollywood can't know everything about ancient Egypt or Greece or whatever. Um, but I think that it's really important to bring up these kind of issues because, well, for once it's fun to discuss and it, it helps the public, I think, to catch on and get a larger interest because, I mean, Indiana Jones got me into archaeology and the movies are kind of a gateway drug. Uh, but yeah, um, basically I think they can do better and they should, but it's okay if they have small inaccuracies. Uh, Andy? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think in the end that we have to recognise that we're dealing with art and fun and entertainment and in, in, in various combinations. And actually, if a, you know, a pharaoh wears a headdress that belongs to an Egyptian princess, but an eight-year-old is inspired to go away and read a book about ancient Egypt and gets interested in Egyptology and embarks on a, a lifetime's journey and passion, then it really doesn't matter. Um, and, 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 you know, in, in the end, archaeologists are part of the real world as well as the world of archaeology and the real world includes cinema and other media outlets and entertainment and we mustn't lose sight of that and, 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 and think that we've got the absolute right to say condemn something simply because uh, it, it puts a Roman emperor in the wrong decade or something like that. Um, you know, in the end if it if it gives people a, a moment that they remember, and if it gives a child maybe the inspiration to go out and find out what really happened, that's what's most important. Aaron? Yeah, I agree with uh, everyone's, uh, their takes on it. I mean, it's, it's definitely something that's important to be looked at as far as if there's any errancy in these movies. Um, but at the same time, these are just movies. 
the, the common person knows it's fictional. They're not really expecting it to be 100% like this is real life accurate. Um, I think it's a good thing when you have these movies out. It, it, like you said, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, um, we call it a doorway drug to get into it, but it's in a positive way because, I mean, Indiana Jones and, of course, other movies we've talked about, like, you know, The Mummy and, and uh, Prince of Persia. These are all action movies, but they get the person interested enough where they'll go out, like Andy said, go and research it maybe or start looking into it more about, you know, these people or this person um, and get them in there. But in the end, the only way this is going to ever change uh, is that the archaeologists themselves, instead of, whether it's on a forum or to one of, you know, to each other, actually go out to these corporations, go out to these, to Hollywood, to these directors and say, look, this is why we believe it's wrong. This is what we could do to make it better and try to actually go out there and help them instead of just, I guess, complaining to ourselves in our own little, uh, own little clique, I guess you could say is the best way for it. Bethany? What do you have to say? Um, no, I, I agree with the whole thing about being a gateway. Um, like for me, when I was little, I used to watch the mummy films and that's what made me want to be an archeologist. In fact, for a while I wanted to be an Egyptologist specifically. Um, like now that I'm a lot older and I've learned a lot of the things that people are now trying to put into movies, um, I do get a bit angry if there is a small inaccuracy. Um, but I think that's a good thing because if it can make someone feel really passionate and inspired, it'll make them think, oh, you know, we, we need to do something about this. Like you were saying, Aaron, find a way to really get this known. Um, so no, I, I don't really see a problem with the being the, the fictional, um, his, historical fictional films, um, as long as we can find a way to maybe stop it from getting too far um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Reese, last man standing. Yeah, um, well, I definitely agree with the whole um, gateway drug. Um, again, just to parrot that, I agree that archaeologists are their own worst nightmare when it comes to public relations. They need to take control um, of of their own industry in that respect. I mean, Archeosoup is a, um, I suppose, a, 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 um, a, a step in the right direction, I, I think, um, concerning this. And um, uh, Time Team and other shows similar to that have um, sustained um, people's interest in archeology span in what I would deem a more healthier way than um, the Hollywood uh, version. However, I won't lie, I am a huge fan of and I think that's going to be it for this talk. Um, it was really nice talking to you all, and I think we had a really good chat. Um, and we'll see what the next big RQ chat is going to be about. So, see you guys next time. All Bye right, take care, peace. Yep. Thank right. you. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs>